So let's think, let's think about the actual skills now in, in, in the organisations, because you mentioned earlier short-term thinking in terms of contracts with government and how that disincentivises people to be or to think in a, in a green change. way. Yeah. That's, that is also a comment that they make in the report about the skills that are required, that there's always short-term thinking, that some organisations yeah. uh, are just not thinking the way of getting these green skills in the appropriate spot. So what sort of green skills, what would an organisation look like that had the appropriate green skills in its IT well, I area? Think at the top level, you have to have somebody who's a, who's a real strategic thinker um, and can look at his entire network as, an, as a holistic being and to determine what his strategy is moving forward. But he's got to align this with the, with the corporation's IT strategy as well and the actual organisation strategy. Further down the chain, then you get the actual technicians, the guys that are implementing. I mean, they should be quite easy because that's just a normal IT tech that's just putting in something that's more, that's what he's been doing what he, and he's been doing for the, most of his life. It's just that it's a green box he's putting it in. And I think then um, you'll probably need some sort of business analyst that's, that's actually got the skills to work out what the carbon footprint of their existing services is and then look at determining what the cost of the services into a cloud-based environment and to determine whether it's, it's, it's good or bad. Is, is cloud a, a, <coughs> a, a, a selling Christmas to Turkey scenario? For a lot of IT departments, um, <laughs> you know, um, the, I would say so. The, the, one of the biggest challenges we face is that the cost savings we can deliver to people are eliminating half of the little empire that the CTO has built up because the CEO doesn't understand that mm. he doesn't actually need that many people. Mm. Um, and I, th I think um, that, that I think that's one of the biggest challenges actually to. Um, mm. To, to us as an industry going forwards in that a lot of the, the, the um, short-term productivity gains might be at the expense of some jobs, but there'll be other jobs created elsewhere. Well, it does say that in the report that they expect mm. tens of thousands of jobs in different areas if we can actually pursue the green economy correctly. Mm. I'd say the key skills coming out of cloud are going to be skills around um, programming programming applications for cloud yeah. and yeah. actually um, using applications to um, encourage collaboration within organizations and streamline organizations processes um, using cloud because what cloud has done is reduced the barrier of entry barrier to entry for a lot of things and also introduced um, common APIs and, and frameworks for the interaction of different applications so the skills that are going to work forwards are going to be the people that can pick up something off the shelf with an API, pick up something else, and then integrate that into the organisation and, and actually write the middle piece to connect them together and actually modify them to the organisation. I see that's a big thing that's going to go forward with cloud. And then in terms of actually green IT within the organisation, it's, it's, it's about this being, being energy savvy and also being able to put forward long-term projections that are realistic in terms of um, return on investment scenarios. Um, I'd say you know those are the two key skills that are going to benefit in the future. I think to, to pick up on those, I think the, the the programming skills, for want of a better term, um, I'd add to that the need to be agile and to respond very quickly to change, to pick up on new ideas, to to change the way that the um, organisational activity is structured, if you innovation. like, in response to the cloud to innovate. Yeah. Um, and I think in terms of of the the, the sort of longer term planning, I think it's important to have people who, first of all, can gather the appropriate numbers, can then understand and interpret those numbers, and can put those numbers together to make a, a sensible and, and structured business case moving forward. I think, I think there's also, certainly in, in government, is, is this whole culture change of moving from, I own this, I know what it is, I know the type of contract that manages this for me, to a contract which is basically all service related. You, everything is now going to be determined by service targets, utilisation targets, delivery targets, P by Q, which is under like we're, price we're, and quantity. We're back to people who can drive and, cultural and, and change you know, and behavioural change. That's you? right, and you're back to how you jump the CTO out of an ownership scenario to a to a, a, a control and, and delivery scenario. Government need to change from a, a buying a picture scenario to buying mm. a jigsaw scenario. Mm. Yeah, mm. which is basically what the private sector has been doing with cloud. Yeah. yeah, if you look at Amazon, 
um, they started an internal project several years ago mm. where they were going to make every single element of a department have an API, which they then publish to a central database. Mm. So any other department could then interact Easy. with them. Yeah. And instead of having an overall IT system that had to mm. um, evolve from the ground up as a big picture, mm. they evolved their IT system as several pieces of a puzzle mm. and then bits fitted together. Yeah. And that way, if any one bit of the puzzle went down, it was actually quite easy to fill that gap. Mm. Um, whereas government IT, it's always, let's buy a picture. Uh, whereas private sector, it's let's put together pieces of the puzzle mm. and fill the gaps. And I think government need to change their, you know, from, from this overall outsource and uh, well, think, let's have it all done there. Is. To let's just, do that, that, yeah. that, 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 you know, piece One it all together. One of the I've, I've heard, um, I can't attribute unfortunately, is that, I mean, they're, they're a public statement is that's what G Cloud is about. Um, mm. But I've, I've heard from some people that matter that actually part of their intent is to try and have more of the systems integration internal. So to develop that capability to, to, to put the bits of the jigsaw together. Um, and I think, I think in terms of the, the, the green skills, uh, as well as the kind of a, um, making good use of efficient IT, it needs people um, that have a bit of uh, technological know-how, a bit of engineering mm -hmm. know-how. I people, 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 ideally people with a STEM background, yes. Um, mm -hmm. that then uh, are in a position of authority within the organisation. At, at the moment, unfortunately, what we're seeing is that the kind of the person that, that's given the, the kind of green mantle um, is often someone who doesn't really have the authority or the capability or perhaps the background and training um, to really be able to uh, take that analytical approach um, to the problem and, and make real savings. It makes yeah. the point here, in the, one little sentence that caught my here in the report, is that uh, the evidence gathered in the course of this project indicates that in general businesses are not currently certain about their future green skills needs. It seems to me that IT is a little bit more certain about what their IT skills may mm. be in the green and perhaps there's an area that we can take a lead there. I think there's a, a mm. massive skills gap, as Kate points out, at the CSR and consultant level. Um, around IT, which is potentially what's causing IT to get ignored. Because if you imagine the scenario, the green consultant or the CSR guy who's been given this job of greening the organisation goes along and knocks on the door of IT. IT don't want him to meddle. They're just going to come up with some very, very cleverly concocted technical reason to get him back out the door again. <laughs> or even say, oh yes, Perish we're doing thoughts. this already, <laughs> we've been thinking about this for ages, we did virtualization last year, don't you know? Um, mm. And uh, what it's, we... It's like when I was in Brussels last week at this workshop, Digital Europe, so uh, people from some of the biggest uh, consumer electronics and IT companies, um, they're talking about um, you know, sort of ICT carbon measurement. I was the only one in the room that understood technology. I was the only one in the room with a, a technology mm. background. The rest were kind of more administrative people. And it really, it really showed through as well that actually they, they weren't, you know, they were trying, but they really needed that understanding. Yes. Yeah. Green IT 101 course for uh, CSRs and consultants would be really good. We have an ongoing update at the end of it that well, says the it's rich. the latest technology. But, but I think you, you also techniques. need to have people who have the, the presence and the confidence mm. to have those conversations and mm. to, to understand the, the underlying. Change. They need to be empowered yeah. though. I mean, these people yeah. already have that presence and confidence. Well, not, and not the ear in, of the board. Not, a lot not of the in time. the technology. But not, not in the IT arena because mm. they don't have the technological knowledge yes. to back up their position. Mm. So they're easily turned around and, yeah. and sent back mm. out that door. Mm. What we need to be in a scenario where they, they've either got someone um, you know, like John, a consultant for hire that's standing next to them that says, well, hang on just a second here, or actually they're empowered themselves. Yes. And that's a, a big skill that's needed in green IT. So yeah. what you're saying is that even though we've been focusing on soft skills <coughs> over the last few years in IT, actually this requires a few more of the uh, harder uh, yeah. skills. Oh, yeah. It's back, it's back to something we had some time ago, which was this hybrid person, yes. uh, someone who was up with the IT, oh, but also manager. someone who understood the business, they understood the processes, and they could translate what the technology could do, mm. such as Peter has admirably done there with his jigsaw model and the API mm. ideas, into a business scenario, and say, this is the opportunity this presents for us. Now, I can't find the phrase in here, but there's a little reference in here to everybody in the organisation, from top to bottom, having an awareness, I think they call it light green yes. skills all the way through the organisation. Yes. Well, I would say that that's more of a function of a, of a, of a CSR person. Um, to, to, to develop the general um, resource efficiency type of uh, view and concept. 
really there should be a small team of people that are concentrating on the technology side. I think if you widen the brief, it, it, the message does get lost. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the things is there are products out there that can help you cascade that green message via the use of IT down to the individual user. Um, for instance, you can have PC power management dashboards that will bring you up mm. your energy use compared to other people within your department yeah. and, the, and the organizational target as a whole. And the, and the better ones of those products will actually give you windows where you can sort of say to people, oh, we're having a fair trade um, exhibition in, 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 the, in the auditorium um, at lunchtime today. Get yourself along there and there'll be a few people that are you know, selling fair trade coffee or sustainable products and sort of push the message out wider outside of IT that the other things that the company is doing, recycling, for instance, water management, mm -hmm. so, um, your own energy use, in the home, you know, yeah. these are the big companies have already got those sort of programs in development. Yes. You yeah. commonly see that a CSR person, you know, the, the overall role is usually evangelical or they're an energy manager and they're evangelizing about uh, reducing energy consumption, but often they'll have a facilities person, someone below them, that's their job to literally seek out and, yeah. and destroy waste within the facilities. But I think actually what we're highlighting here is that below them they also need an IT person that has to go out and seek out and destroy waste within the IT estate because the IT estate probably is as big a consumer of energy as facilities. Mm. And, mm. and I'd say that mm. uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things we need to take to, to people and say this is something I that's think needed. It, it, it boggles me that people are not running PC power management software these days um, because it's you know we have the technology to force people to be energy efficient mm. and I'm I don't know, I'm, I'm a bit of a command and control person you know, in, in, in my company I'm, I'm the green Nazi for want of a better word and you know we'll, we'll put systems in place we use that <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, you know we if we can develop an IT system or augment it so that it will take the choice away, so that it mm. will shut things down when they're not used, like mm. you know, stupid things or, or, mm. or procedural aspects like um, you know, following certain um, good best practices, and then for the things that um, for the other things, having someone actually chasing around and questioning and auditing and saying why is that <coughs> paper in the wrong bin, mm. and you know, actually being prepared to discipline people on it. Mm. Um, I think. You know, there's only so far you can get with the kind of the lovey-dovey approach of trying to get everyone to be be good and and and, yeah. and change them that way. I mean, you get mixed messages as well. I mean, there was a recent case where a small district council somewhere in um, Somerset Way um, were having a PC power management week, and they got the, one of the security staff to go around, and everybody who turned their PC off would get a bar of chocolate, <laughs> and you think, well. That's not really the sort of, yeah, yeah, be green on your PC, but put a couple of inches on your waistline um, as a reward for turning your PC off, when really that should have been done automatically. That's yeah, some function that after a certain time, the thing should shut down I think it, automatically. Yeah. I think it just, it's a demonstration of behaviour and habits and how hard it is to change these and not to assume they are changed when you deliver a solution. Yeah. It's making sure it is enabled, it's making sure it's chased up. And that you have One of the things we found in DEFRA is actually making things visible, actually showing people the effect they can have by doing these things by piles of toner boxes for printing reduction. You know, can we reduce that pile of empty toner boxes we're generating every, every month? Um, can we actually, as someone said, you know, show a power uh, consumption for the building? Um, or even for server rooms in the building or network switches in the building where you can show clear changes happening. Mm. Um, and I think something we're trying to do in government at the moment, probably to stand back, just wanted to, to mention it, is this Olympic thing coming up um, where we have big opportunity, a big challenge um, in London at least and other venues in the country of reducing the amount of travel going on because of the extra travel that will be taking place from the Olympic events mm. through the summer. And actually this week, we, we across government departments have been given uh, opportunity to try and demonstrate how far we can green up what we do and reduce our footprints and change our behaviours, have a trial week, see where the challenges arise, both in terms of behaviour and technology, because I have a lot of people going to be working out of the office across central government to see whether they can do so and deliver the business at and, the same and then, time. And, and, and then put that learning into preparations for Olympics. But the important thing is to see it as a step change, to see it as a platform that you can then look at government staff working in different ways permanently 
once the business has the confidence mm. that it can continue to deliver with greener ways of working. I'm going to disagree with your, your so. criticisation of the chocolate bar, John. Oh, okay. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm first of all, I'm, uh, I'm quite keen on chocolate. But no, re the re re reality behind that is that I think we need to accept that, you know, those three tools I spoke about, which government was using earlier, incentivization, taxation, regulation, those are the same three tools we have within organisations yeah. to change the culture. Um, carrot, stick and rules. Mm. Yeah? And actually, we need to find ways of using all three. Because if you just implement a policy and you then force all the computers off without actually changing the behaviour of the people through mm. carrot and stick, then you will, you'll end up in a situation where you have a massive resistance to change. And It'd be chocolate bar and stick, wouldn't it? Yeah, pe <laughs> people will try and find ways to circumvent your measures and they'll complain yeah. and so on and so forth. Whereas actually implementing a policy where you incentivise first and you try to actually get a, um, mm. a culture where the person who's left his PC on is in the wrong well, and then you implement a hard can, can, policy. Well, I'll just, I'll that just I'll reply to that. Right, the, the, one, of the, um, one of the users of our application actually gives the top energy efficient person by the metric um, a car parking spot closer to the main <laughs> entrance. But they also have, um, you can run campaigns. So you can actually um, incentivize different ways, iPods for the best person on a monthly basis. And, you know, th there are ways of. I think I just, yeah, yeah, the key point they're there chocolate to, bars, yeah. but they're not yeah. chocolate. The key bars. point there is to, to mm. actually say there are those three elements that yeah, need yeah. to be mm. used. They are the three tools which we have, yeah. and we should, you know, it's so easy for the IT manager who's used to having security policy just to push a button mm. and have another policy on his system yeah. instead of actually looking to, to implement behavioural change for those three measures. And I think that's one of the reasons that you'll find projects like um, video conferencing and home working in many areas start to fail because it's just a case of the common IT approach to that is let's stick in a system to enable it mm. rather than let's stick in a system to enable it and then make sure it gets used yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. and uh, you know I that's, that's another I, skill I, that needs just, to happen. Just, just sort of come in quickly and just say I think we are in danger of getting into command and control environment here I think it's you know, staff shouldn't be seen as victims we are all employees of various organizations and I think it's very important that you engage a lot of success is, has come out of, of actually talking to staff themselves within the organisations I've been involved with, and then you have commitment from the beginning about ways yeah. in which they can do things better and what technologies might then support that, rather than assume you know they don't, yeah. they don't know better, we know better, um, which I think can be very, very abrasive for staff yes. and, and open up a terrible brick wall scenario. Absolutely. If that's not a clash of metaphors. This, this part of the debate, we began by talking about the importance of people with science, technology, engineering and maths backgrounds mm. and the need to incorporate knowledge of technology Indeed, yeah. and, and so on. Yeah. And we've gone back to changing mm. behaviour. We've mm. gone back to giving people chocolate bars to switch their PCs off yeah. and so on. <laughs> yeah. Which is, um, again, kind of highlights some of the, the difficulties that we have, I think, as, mm. a, as a, a green IT mm. industry in mm. trying to understand exactly what we're aiming to do. 